thy mercy and thy grace. I pray as we preach to this people that thy spirit would so touch their hearts that they would know that they have been in the presence of the Lord. I remind you, O God, that I am unable within myself to meet the needs spiritually of this congregation, but thou canst do this thing. And I ask you to do it tonight. Lord, as we've asked for so many times, we do not seek the plaudits of men. We do not ask for the accolades of our brethren. We simply ask, O oh God, that we be a channel through which thy spirit may flow. And God, I ask it in the great name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. The spirit of rebellion has been here from the time that Eve disobeyed God until this present hour. Absalom could almost typify the young people of this day and age. He was a long-haired dropout. A young man that was not with it as far as the Spirit of God was concerned and his father David. He didn't like the way the nation ran. He was young. He was handsome. He was intelligent. He was intellectual. The Bible bears out in its record that there was not one blemish upon him from the crown of his head until the sole of his feet. It could have been so different, but there was a rebellious flame that smoldered in the very depths of his soul. A rebel spirit. A spirit that seemed to take him over. A spirit that seemed to strike out against one of the kindest men that ever lived, his father David. Absalom would have gotten along very well in this slick, smart, sophisticated age in which we live in today. He would have gotten along with this modern crowd. He would have fit right into the groove with this era of society that is striking out against the establishment. But this is exactly what Absalom did. He didn't like the establishment. He didn't like the way the nation was run. He did not like civil authority. He told person after person that would lend him their ear that there was a much better job that could be done. There was a much better way to do it. His father was an old fogey. He was an old-fashioned man that was behind the times. He wasn't up to the modern trend that had set in in this affluent, prosperous nation of Israel. And then he listened to Absalom and he literally won the hearts of of millions of people in that day. And brother, I want you to know in this hour, this rebellious spirit that is filling the hearts of so many of our young people uh, is winning millions to their cause. But it is a spirit of destruction. It is a spirit of wreckage and the end thereof are the ways of death. There came a day when the die was cast. There came an hour when the lines were cut. There came a day that the dividing line was set right down the midst of Israel. The clarion call came. The forces of evil on one side, the forces of God on the other. For a few hours and a few days there it looked like that the throne would tremble. It looked like David would go down into abject defeat. Absalom, this young prince, Absalom, this young rebel, had won the hearts of the mightiest men of Israel. Ahithophel, the Bible said this man spoke with such wisdom that he seemed to speak of the oracles of God. He seemed to sit at the feet of God. He sided with Absalom the rebel. He went along with him. His counsel was given to this young rebel. This man fleet of foot and fleet of thought in mind. But the die was cast. The spirit of Almighty God moved to 20,000 men died that day. Those hills of Judah 
literally ran red with human blood. 20,000 graves were dug. 20,000 corpses littered that countryside that day. 20,000 homes that would weep and bow. Avail. And Absalom the rebel that rebelled against God, that rebelled against his father David, that rebelled against righteousness on a mule that day trying to get away. His hair caught in the low hanging limbs of a great oak tree. And Joab the military chief and the commando in chief of the armies of Israel thrust three darts into the heart of Absalom. And ten men came up behind him with swords and their hands and spears and literally cut his body to pieces and thrust him through and thus the young rebel died. I said that to say this, there is but one way that the spirit of rebellion can end. There is but one road that it can take. There is but one conclusion, young man, and that conclusion is death. There is a spirit in this land today, a spirit of rebellion such as has never been here before in the history of this nation, this republic, or this world. It's a spirit that grips the hearts of multiplied millions. This is not just some passing fancy or fan. This is not just some mode of thinking. This is not just some new trend that seems to have sprung up in these last few months. But this is a diabolical scheme of the powers of hell to steal and to kill and destroy. A spirit of rebellion that's gripping the hearts of millions of our young people. The new News and World Report, one of America's greatest news weeklies, reiterated some short time ago. It went on to say that dynasties and kingdoms and empires and countries and governments are falling today at an unprecedented rate. And this prolific writer said that these governments are not falling to the crash of cannon and the boom of mighty artillery and the marching of great armies. But these governments are being brought down by university students and by high school students that are in a state of rise in revolution and rebellion and brother that spirit is in America today it is being nurtured it is being fathered it is being fostered by the powers of darkness Today, there are young people that are walking the streets of our cities, that are cursing the United States of America, that are cursing those that are in the place of authority, that are screaming, burn, baby, burn, that damns all civil government and authority. A spirit of revolution is literally being fostered and nurtured in this land of America, the land of the brave and the home of the free. Rebellion against society. Rebellion against the establishment so-called. Rebellion against the parental authority. Rebellion against the church. Rebellion against God. Rebellion against all laws of any nature and any kind today. This spirit literally characterizes the age in which we live today. There is an attitude that is in the hearts and lives of our young people that is deadly today. And that attitude is, we will not answer to anyone. We'll do as we please. We will not answer to mom or dad. We will not answer to the pastor. We will not answer to God if there is a God and if he is, he's dead. We will not answer to anyone today. I had a mother walk up to me just last night. And she said, Brother Swaggart, there is a young lady in a distant state that has heard you preach the gospel. And she said, I know her so intimately and so well. Just a short time ago, she turned the age of 18. And for some unexplainable, mysterious reason, she looked her mother and dad in the face And when she got up the morning of her 18th birthday and said, I've gone to school the last day. I'm going to live like I want to live. I'm going to do 
do what I want to do. I'm going to go any place that I want to go. I'm going to drink alcoholic beverage if I want to do it. It's my life now. I'm not going to answer to you. You can preach. You can do anything you want to do. And that lady stood there and wept and sobbed and cried and said, Brother Swaggart, would you agree with me right now that God will somehow touch that teenager and bring her back to that place in Christ Jesus that she wants new. Mr. These are not isolated incidents, but this is happening in wholesale lots all over this nation today. Young people are looking at their mothers and dads. They're saying you're an old fogey. I don't believe that uh, ridiculous garbage that you're trying to tell me today. I believe I know the way I want to go. And I won't answer to you. I'll do what I want to do. I'll live like I want to live. I'll go where I want to go. I'll say what I want to say. I'll stay up as late as I want to stay. And this is a spirit that will wreck and steal and kill and destroy. Why are our youth in this condition today? Why are they in this terrible condition? Could it be that parents have failed? I am not here to, to harangue on mothers and dads in this hour. For I am a parent myself. My son turned 15 years of age today. I do not know all the ins and outs of raising children. I feel today that it's harder than it's ever been before. I feel the tentacles of hell are reaching out for our young people as they've never reached. This is the most dangerous, critical period that our children have ever known in all of their history, mister. Some of you parents listen to me tonight and you say, but preacher, I had the same temptations. I had the same pressures. I had the same problems when I was a young lady or a young man a few years ago. I beg your pardon, mom and dad. Your sons and daughters are facing hell on earth that you never faced. They are facing temptations that you never knew existed. They are facing diabolical schemes of hell that had never been thought of just a few years ago. They are facing merchants of darkness that are filling their pockets with ill-gotten gold as they try to destroy them with filthy pictures and illicit sex on the movie screen and with their propagation of immorality and the new age in which we live it is directed at our children and 75% of the filthy literature and the filthy pictures that come from those merchants of immorality that are going to burn in hell 75% of it winds up in the hands of our boys and our girls and that ridiculous Supreme Court will sit in Washington in their imbecilic, moronic ways and allow it to be transported through the mails and sold on the newsstand like an open search spewing filth and disease into a city and a mainstream of life. God help us today. I feel for our children. Every day that rolls around, I pray for my son. I know the devil will do everything within his power to kill him, to wreck him, to destroy him. Our children in the past few years have been enraged in an environment of television. Television has become the glorified babysitter. Television is the teacher. Television is mom. Television is dad. Television tells them what to play with when they're little tots and toddlers. It tells them what to dance to. It tells them how to sway their bodies. It tells them what cigarettes to smoke when they get a little bigger. It tells them what beer to drink when they grow up just a little bit more. It teaches them of immorality. It talks about violence and pushes it down their throats. They are raised on a steady diet of it. And I want to tell you, mister, mom and dad, you'd better not take lightly what I'm saying and what is happening today. You had better guard your family and your sons and your daughters as you have never guarded them before. What this nation needs today is some more old-fashioned parental authority. 
need some mothers and dads and a stand of like men and women with the word of God for their backbone and for their foundation and will live for God in front of their children will have a family altar and will serve notice on that boy that he's not going to go to hell Jimmy Swaggart wouldn't be here preaching tonight I wouldn't be singing these gospel songs tonight I'd be in a dirty low down rotten nightclub somewhere but my dad put his foot down and said son you're not going to do what Jerry Lee does you may not live for God and I can't make you live for him but as long as you're under my roof you're going to respect my God you're not going to drag in here at one o'clock in the morning you're going to respect Jesus Christ and I thank my God for it today friend we need some parental authority in the homes nowadays mom and dad I want you to know the old fashioned belt may be old fashioned but it still does the job it still gets the job done and we need a lot of our parents and I don't care how old they are and this is some old fashioned preaching you don't hear too much nowadays and I don't care dad if that boy can look you right square in the eye as long as he's under your roof he ought to respect you he ought to respect God you ought to be able to look at him and say boy you're going to church and he goes to church you hear what I'm saying that was a day it was that way in America I respect my dad today I'm 34 years of age and weigh nearly 200 pounds but I'm still a little bit scared of my dad and I thank God for that old fashioned woodshed philosophy based on the holy word of God that he raised me on you can take some woodshed philosophy and you can take the word of God and keep your children in the pathways of righteousness I believe it still works but I see children today that have rebelled and I'm almost of the place that it's hard to strike out against them for doing it mother and dad what little vestige of religion they have left to simply telling the kids to go to Sunday school or maybe sending them and children get sick and tired of a, a dad or a mom that drags in in the wee small hours of the morning so drunk they can't stand and then sending their children to Sunday school or to mass or anything else they get sick and tired of double standard and hypocrisy of a refrigerator full of beer fingers stained with nicotine dad that curses every other breath and it's become fashionable for mom to do it nowadays too mom curses just as much as dad and brother I want you to know womanhood in this nation has lost just about every ounce of it I don't know what the green I do for you and I'm on it will affect someone else one of the most sordid experiences I ever read of I read the other day the police broke into a home at the instigation of neighbors I say a home an apartment and when they broke into that little two or three room place they found the mother, if you would call her that, sitting on the floor under the influence and effect of LSD. She was so out of her mind, she didn't know she was in the world. Her little one-year-old baby was lying in the bathtub. Blood was splattered all over the place, and she had cut that baby's heart out of its body. And they tried to get some sense out of her and she babbled and screamed and cried and would seem to come to sanity and then go back into a foggy world and they picked up that little precious child with its heart cut out of its body and she had the heart in her hands and oh my god it affects someone else do you hear me the other day when a young lady by the name of Miss Linkletter jumped from a multi-story window her body dashed to death on the concrete below her famous father Art Linkletter told the American people in the world my daughter did not commit suicide but she was murdered by those that manufacture LSD and sell it to those like my daughter Mister, it affects others do you hear me it affects others do you hear me tonight 
everything that you do affects someone else. I stood in a hotel room in a not too distant city and I listened to three girls as they spoke to my wife and myself. And I, they had come under great Holy Ghost conviction in the course of the meeting, Assembly of God girls. And I spoke to them and pleaded with them. They had sought this audience. And for nearly three hours, my wife and I spoke to them about their spiritual condition. They were lovely young ladies, 16, 17 years of age, all three of them. Finally, the prettiest of the trio, the spokesman, I could tell that she had come to the place that a decision had to be made. She looked up at me just before she left and stood to her feet. She said, Brother Swaggart, you listen to me. I am going to do what I want to do. And I am going to go to the dances if I want to go. I am going to take a drink, a highball if I want to do it. If I want to neck and smooth and pet with a young man I will do it it doesn't affect anyone but me and if I want to do it I will do it and she walked out of that room and those two girls followed her it broke my heart to see them go they did not attend those services anymore I heard three years later, now listen to me tonight, three years later, that that girl that had looked at me and said, Brother Swaggart, I'm going to do these things. I believe that your way's too old-fashioned. I don't believe it applies to this age in which we live. If I want to dance, I'm going to do it. You listen to me. I preach against a lot of things, and I don't like to do it. It's not exactly popular to do it, but I do it because I hurt, and I see our kids being lost. And I see people that are being wrecked and torn. You're looking at one preacher that's against the dance. I'm against it in any shape, form, or fashion. I believe that it's wrong. I don't care if we Pentecostals have gotten updated and become spiritually sophisticated and we're sort of winking our eyes at some of the things that are happening today. Brother, the dance is vulgar. It is rotten. I don't care if it's a high school dance chaperoned by a dozen school teachers and half a hundred parts. It leads to immorality. It leads to degradation. It leads to vulgarity. And it has broken the hearts and the lives and the homes of multiplied millions. Young lady, listen to me. That body that God gave you was not intended to be used as a piece of merchandise on a bargain basement counter somewhere. This is the age of the flesh. The age of the titillating desire. The age when we tickle and tingle the senses. Do it. Live it up. I think of the dances of yesterday. But Mr. Even those that were so so different than these vulgar dances today that they pale by comparison. At those dances, that's where homes started to the divorce courts. That's where young men started to be alcoholics. That's where many young ladies lost their purity and their character and their morals. And brother, it has gotten 100 times worse. And these dance programs that come over television with the beat of the guitars and the roll of the drums, this is not just some little fad called the twist or the fug or the jerk or the swim or the monkey but this is the power of darkness that has one thing to it and that is to ensnare your son and your daughter and I can see even little babies as they sit on the living room floor and that music will come on and they'll begin to twist their bodies for the devil is starting young friend. He's starting day. I am not over-dramatizing this thing. While I am speaking, there are multiplied thousands that are heading down that primrose path to hell and they'll be wrecked and torn and destroyed and burned forever and forever. Not only be lost in hell, but be wrecked here until life becomes a veritable hellish darkness. 
And that girl, that precious, lovely young girl, was killed coming back from a dance as her boyfriend in a drunken condition turned the car over and she never knew what hit her. The other two had to get married, the proverbial shotgun wedding. And I thought, oh my God, the wages of sin is death. Do your own thing providing it hurts no one else. I picked this up out of the Chicago Dispatch the other day. A young girl wrote in and said, I'm 19 years old, and I think I'm losing my mind. Six months ago, friends got me to take LSD, and I fear it has made me mentally ill. Most of my pleasant emotions and natural feelings have left me. I went to the doctor at school and later to a psychiatrist, but neither seemed to know much about the drug and treatment for its effects. Can you find any psychiatrist who is qualified and experienced in handling a patient who has taken LSD? Another attitude that grips the hearts of our youth today is a know-it-all attitude. You can't tell me anything, preacher. My psychologist said the other day, it is no need trying to show people the harmful effects of their wrongdoings because that's never deterred anyone. Well, there is nothing else that can be done. God Almighty said in this book, if you do it, you'll die. If you do it, you'll die. I know it all. Let me tell you, young man and young lady, you have the body of a man and a woman. But you haven't walked the paths. You haven't been along the trails. You don't have the experience. And what your mother and dad tells you, they know, for they have been there. They've walked those paths. They've shed those tears. They know what is going on. You think that sex, why the old taboos have been done away with. Let's have one more big she literally trembled when I walked through that door and turned as pale as death and said, of all people, Jim, you would have had to be the one to come by. God sent me. For over an hour, I preached to her mother and to her. I mean preached. And I told her mother, they went to the same church mine did. If you let that girl go to that place and sing tonight, she'd been invited to one of the big Gold Coast nightclubs in Biloxi, Mississippi, that place that God smoked off of the face of the earth just a few months ago, a few weeks ago. And I said, Linda, if you go there, she had a golden voice. You're putting yourself in the devil's territory, and you can expect nothing but the worst. I spelled it out, and that mother jumped up and pointed a finger in my face and said, I resent you coming in here and speaking to my daughter in this way. I'll have you know that she has been raised right. She's been raised in church. She knows right from wrong. She would never, never do these things. Don't you ever swallow that line, Mom and Dad. Don't you ever listen to that lie from hell. That boy and girl, when they're not saved by the blood of Jesus, they'll do anything. There's nothing they want do. The devil will drive them. He's trying to wreck them. He's starting them out at an early age. Don't be befuddled and confused by the lie from hell that everything is all right. It's not all right. It's not all right. She said, my girl would never do this. I wish I could say I succeeded, but I didn't. I didn't make the grade, even though I wept and pleaded and threatened and cajoled and spelled it out. I didn't make it. 
And four months later, at 16 years of age, just a child, I watched that mother and that daughter sit with head in hands and weep and cry. And that mother clenched her fist and pounded the table and said, Oh my God, Jimmy, my girl, having to marry a man ten years her senior, no love there, having to marry him, she was already two months pregnant. Sixteen years old. And I watched that girl put her head in her hands and the tears slip through her fingers and drop to the floor and say, Jimmy, if we had only listened. And you know, after you take one step, young man, the other one is a lot easier to take. Young lady, you take one, it just seems like the natural thing to do to go ahead and take another one. That girl today has been married four times. Children that are shunted from here to there. And her life a wreck, soiled, dirtied, besmirched. I want to tell you this. The devil plays for keeps. And he knows the game. Would you bow your heads, please? God, I come to thee this night grateful, thankful for thy love and mercy. Thankful, God, that thy spirit has prevailed in this age in which we live. Thankful, O oh God, that people can still come to thee and I'm asking you that your spirit would move in this place tonight. Lord, we've had to preach hard. We have not desired to do so. But oh God, I pray for our mothers, our dads, our young people. God, touch them and speak to them in this hour. I pray that thy spirit would move tenderly within and throughout this place. Father, this rebellious spirit that it may be rebuked, I ask it in the holy name of my loving Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, help us today. Help us today. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Spirit of God is here. You know what I'm going to do first of all? I'm going to talk to you, Mom and Dad. How many of you here tonight? Brother Swigert, we need to do a little straightening up in our home. We need to get back to a few things that we once did and no longer do, such as family altar, such as stopping a few things that are ungodly and immoral, that's designed to destroy the family. How many of you moms and dads would raise your hands, preach a pray for me? I see these hands. Pray for me. We need prayer. Let me see them. Raise them one more time. I see them. God bless you. Could you play it just as I am without one plea? But that thy blood was shed for me, O Lamb of God, I come. Now, young people, listen to me carefully. I do not know how many of you that are here that are lost. But God loves you. That same power that's trying to destroy you and hate you, on the other side, God has great power and He loves you. He has a great life for you if you'll only allow Him to give it to you. 
How many of you young people would raise your hand, Brother Swigert, I'm lost without God. I need prayer. Would you slip up that hand and let God see it? I do not know how many unsaved young people we have, but I have to appeal to you if you're here. Let me see that hand. Slip it up right now. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Now listen to me. If how many here, Brother Jimmy? I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. I'm talking to our young people now. I love God. I want Christians to plead the blood. I want you to pray. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Brother Swaggart, I'm a teenager. But these pressures and temptations that you have spoken of tonight, I know of what you say. I'm experienced with it. And I need prayer that God will help me. I do not want to fail. I must not. I do not want to take that step in the wrong direction. I must not. Pray that God will give me strength to say no. Pray that God will give me strength to live as I ought to live. Would you raise your hands right now, young people? Let God see them. Slip them up. I see these hands and God bless you so much. I want every young person in this place, below 21 years of age, down to 10 years old, I want you to stand to your feet, please. Every one in the audience, please. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Whether you are a Christian or not, a member of this church or not, I want you to come tonight, if you will. And stand right here. I will not embarrass you. I'll give you my word. Stand right here in this front. We want to pray for you. As we sing it, I want you to come.